Hello. On this session, I would like to talk about the science of baptisms. Um, so uh, a lot of us have gone through baptisms or some of us believe that we've experienced baptisms. Um, and many of us were never really taught the importance of what they're actually for or what they're supposed to do. Um, in my book, uh, Fullness Guide to Sonship and Mysticism, I talk about several baptisms, um, like nine. <laughs> um, in this video, I only talk about three because these are three of the most um, contentious, um, three of the most popular. Uh, and so I'll try my best to break down the science and uh, significance of each one of these and why it's necessary as a spiritual person to undergo each of these. So first, uh, I want to draw out the idea that um, these baptisms go in a specific order when done perfectly. Now, most of us, especially in the time period we're in, we may have experienced none. We may have experienced them all out of order. But for the sake of this video, I'll describe them in order of which ones I've seen uh, best complement each other. So I'll give the best possible order, but know that uh, you can really you can receive them in any order. Uh, however, this order is best. <laughs> so starting off, it's the baptism of water. Now, the baptism of water, typically people talk about it from a means of salvation because there are scriptures that talk about uh, baptizing for salvation, but that also comes with a flawed understanding of what salvation is. Uh, and I'll be the first to say the way that Christianity teaches salvation is completely false. It doesn't work that way at all. The concept itself is flawed. Um, salvation... And what it actually means has to do with being saved from something. Meaning it's a shifting of states, a shifting of consciousness, a shifting of realities from one to another. A lower state to a higher state. A worse state to a better state. That's what salvation's all about. And that fits perfectly in line with what this baptism is all for. In that, when a person has made a transition and you've entered a new phase of life, it's important to close the door on the old. Um, if I want to use biblical narrative, um, Exodus talks about uh, Moses and the uh, Israelites escaping from Egypt. And it talks about how they went through the water. <laughs> and it closed behind them. Killing Pharaoh and the Egyptians, so on and so forth. That is a picture of what of what water baptism does. It closes the door on where you've been so that you can fully embrace where you're going. And yes, it is a physical thing because it not only it's not only a consciousness thing, it is a physical thing. There is power in water alone. Water carries healing frequencies. Water carries refreshing Water carries renewal, rejuvenation. So it's important for you to actually get your physical body in some water so that not only can you escape <laughs> at the last moment from your past, but no, so that you can be physically rejuvenated so that you can enter your next phase of life with life. Um, let me back up a little bit. So. Something that is important is to understand what baptism alone is, right? Baptism by itself, and I love the way that uh, someone I used to work with would describe it, um, is that it's kind of like being pickled. In that you take a cucumber and you put it in brine, and at the end of its transformation, it's now something different. While it once was this one thing, it's now definitely something else. And in order for that process to take place, it has to be submerged. It's a bath of some sort. It's a submergence of some sort. And once you understand baptism as a submersion for the means of uh, transfiguration, change, shifting, and things like that, it's easy to spot them in different places when they're not necessarily called that. 
and the water baptism specifically submerges you in a place, completely washes you over, rejuvenates you, washes the old off so that you can step into your new. Following that, I believe should be the baptism <laughs> of uh, the spirit or the baptism of fire. But I'll go spirit. The baptism of the spirit activates, it rejuvenates, it activates the God part of yourself because you're being submerged in spirit. You're being submerged in Holy Spirit. So you're being at the very least brought back to the place of that genetic childhood with God. Where before, let's just say you're just adopted. You're in the family of God, but you're not genetically of the lineage of God. Following the baptism of the Spirit, you're now something new. <laughs> you're now something new altogether. Where on a genetic level now, you're the same thing that God is. This is what I believe fits better as a born-again experience. Um, something that I found out when studying science biology and things like that is that the tissue that we are made up of comes from our mother and that your physical body is made out of the tissue of your mother's body genetic material may be included with some of that of your father but what you're actually made of comes from your mother no different in the spirit that holy spirit the one in whom we're born of the spirit from is our heavenly mother and as such, in that process, that born again experience, that rebirth experience, that baptism of the spirit, you're reincubated and you're created of a new tissue, this new spiritual tissue. Where before you may have mentally been someone different, you may have closed the door on the old, stepped into your new, but you're still something else. So I... Uh, biblical text even says that you are a new creature because you're genetically something different now. Now stepping into the baptism of fire, which people oftentimes will say the baptism of Holy Ghost fire, which isn't the same thing. They are two separate baptisms referencing when John the Baptist prophesied and said that I am baptizing you with water. <laughs> There's one coming after me who's going to baptize you with spirit and with fire. And the fire aspect has to do with purity and purification. In that this is our this is our bath. This is what keeps us pure. As with the lake of fire and I've done a video called hell in quotation marks where I talked about the different uh, aspects of what creates hell and the realities and the falsehood surrounding that topic and I talk a bit more about this topic here but the lake of fire has always been created for us in our perfected state to stay perfected and that you're already seen as gold you're already seen as valuable by God you're probably just dirty so the lake of fire the fire of God is meant to purify you it'll energize but its main purpose is to purify to remove the impurities, to remove that is not what you really are. And what you really are is the same thing that God is. So the purpose of the fire is to strip you of your carnality so that you can walk into your divinity fully. So in fact, if I was putting these baptisms in order, it would be water, fire, then spirit. Because that's actually the way that it's structured in the temple, where you encounter the water in which the priests would wash their hands before they got to work. <laughs> and then you would encounter the brazen altar, the lake of fire, which is the baptism of fire, which is the place of purity, right? And then further into the temple, you would encounter this altar of incense. That would be your baptism of spirit. So even within the temple structure, we see the layout of what should be. So let's talk about some dysfunction. What happens 
if you're born of the spirit, you let's say you've had your spirit baptism, but you've never been baptized in water. What happens then? What are you missing? Your past will continue to surround you. The door to the old will never be closed. So you'll still be encountering the same troubles of your past, even though you've moved on. Your past will still have access to you. What happens if I have the other baptisms, but I don't have a spirit baptism? You're not a new creature yet. So you'll struggle to really do the things of the spirit. <laughs> Overall, you'll struggle to do the things of God because you're not yet made of the same substance of God. When God first created man, there was no difference. But uh, a simple truth genetically as you think, so you are. Mankind lived in a conscious state of defilement for so long that it eventually became very much genetic. Where I guess you could say it's appropriate to say that people are made of iniquity. If you want to say it that way. And that's what the baptism of the spirit is for. It's to shift your genetics back into a place of divinity. And with said divinity comes access to be able to move in the things that God does and actually do the work of the father and do the work of the mother to actually be able to function as kings and priests. You need the baptism of the spirit in order to function in the spirit, in order to function spiritually, you need this baptism. What happens if I have the other two, but I don't have the baptism of fire? Well, you'll keep all of your impurities. <laughs> You'll keep them all. You'll be a spiritual prodigy with dysfunction. You'll be rude. You'll be nasty. The gifts will work. You'll be a superhero, but you'll people won't really like you. You'll be toxic to be around. You'll be unhealthy. You'll still be having your soul issues rile up. You'll still be angry. You'll still be carnal because you have not yet or have not continually allowed yourself to be purified. So with that, let's say, don't skip any of these. As a spiritual person, you need them all. They're all a part of you as the temple that you are, and they're meant to activate and give you access to different parts of the temple that you are. So, um, even in that, if I was to uh, categorize them as far as what launches you into what, Water baptism launches you into the outer to be able to fully function in the outer. Fire baptism awakens you in the rest of the outer and then launches you into the into the holies or the inner court. So that you can begin to function with the fire of the inner from fire into fire. The baptism of the spirit or the altar of incense launches you into a spiritual reality so that you begin to deal with things from a spiritual level um, before you're encountering God as a voice, uh, before you're encountering God as an idea. In this space, you're encountering God spirit to spirit. So go through the process. <laughs> Water, fire, spirit. Um, and like I said, I talk about this in full detail in my book. I talk about uh, like nine different baptisms in this book, Fullness, Guide to Sonship and Mysticism. You can find it on Amazon, Kindle, and Barnes and & Noble. Um, description down below, you can find links to order the book. Um, if you want to be a part of the Discord community, um, we'd love to have you. There's always stuff happening there, great conversations. Um so if you're looking for a place to join some other weirdos and have meaningful, meaningful conversations and grow spiritually with a community that can understand you a little bit, uh, Discord links down below. Um, all my other links are down below. Um, and that's it for this session. Y'all be blessed.